One of the most popular workflow patterns in Flowgear is the ETL pattern, which allows you to extract data from a data source, transform it into a different shape, and then load it into a target system. Although those are the high-level steps, there are a number of things that you need to do along the way to make this process efficient. So Flowgear gives you kind of boilerplate plumbing tools that allow you to eliminate data that hasn't changed since the last time you processed it, iterate over a large record set in smaller stages, visually map data, evaluate whether the load into the target system was successful or not, and then record that success or failure. Here's an example template of what an ETL process looks like. Over here where you see this note would be the point at which you extract data from the data source. Then the reduce node is going to allow you to eliminate data that hasn't changed since the last time it was processed. You'll do that by putting the raw data into the source document property and the reduce node will be responsible for returning only data that's been changed since the last iteration. The for each node is going to allow you to step through any number of documents either individually or in smaller sizes according to the value that's stored in chunk size. Quick map allows data to be manipulated visually so that you don't have to write any scripting to do data transformations. The next stage would be to push the data or at least attempt to push it into the target system and then you'd be able to use an if statement to look at a particular section of the document to figure out whether that insert process or update process occurred successfully. If it did, you'll record a key value set to status of success, and if it failed, you'll record a key value set to status of failure. In the case of a success, typically the key is going to be the incoming identifier for the source, and the value will be the target. So for instance, if you're integrating from an e-commerce platform into an accounting system, the key might be your incoming sales order number, and the value would be the invoice that got generated in your accounting system. In the case of a failure, key would be the incoming order, and value would be the error message. Flowgear then makes it easy to report on key values so that you can use those as the basis for recon reporting or alerts to users. Here's an implemented version of that pattern. Over here we're reading a flat file. We're converting that flat file to XML. So these first two stages are about acquiring the data or the extract part of the process. Then we use reduce to eliminate data that hasn't changed. We iterate through these rows one at a time and then we run the quick map process to visually map specific fields in that payload from the source into the target shape that we require. Then we are using Microsoft SQL table update to insert data into a target table and then finally we're using an if statement to evaluate whether that happened successfully or not. In this case I'm just looking at the rows affected property which will be zero if no rows were changed or otherwise greater than zero if rows were changed successfully. In other scenarios I might need to look at the response document coming back. For instance if I'd integrated into Salesforce I could look at a specific section of the document to figure out whether the item had been created successfully. Once I've made that determination using the if statement I'll use the key value pairs to either record success or failure. Mm -hmm. 